Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim every trading day, folks, at Ord or dash. That's Ord-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. Tim's going to be doing a workshop for us in the uh, next few weeks. We'll uh, announce this workshop next week. He has some great tools. Tim Ord, what's going on? All right. Uh, we kind of... I wanted an update uh, last week. We were looking at the gold market. Yes. And and I'm I'm thinking we're going to move higher all the way into uh, August and possibly to the 44 area on GDX. Okay. And since then, the market has, in my opinion, at least GDX. Well, I think it's probably an ABC down. So I wanted to update those charts. What they said. Okay. We did. Uh, S the first chart is the. Let's see which one here is. Which the one do you want me to start with, Tim? Is a GDX, uh, the 18 day average of the GDX advanced decline percent. Okay. The I next have. window up yep. is, is the 18 day average of GDX up down volume percent. Okay. And his, yeah, when history, according to history, and how when both these indicators get above 40, which they did on April 4th, I got the price there. One got to 45, the other one's about almost. 42 over 42 and from there the market rally leads at least last three months and as high as six months but a lot of them around the four or five months so you had uh, say four months to august or so from april you get august and a lot of times seasonality in august is, is used some sort of a high or low in the gold market so well since then the market has actually backed off then and what I want to show is the next indicator, um, which is a trend following indicator. And that's chart two. And this is a 50 day average. The bottom window is a 50 day average of the up down volume. And next higher window is a 50 day average of the advanced decline percent okay. uh, for GDX. And my point is, as long as those are actually. Ideally, you want both those indicators above zero. When that happens, you got an uptrend going. And that blue shaded area, uh, this chart goes back to 2009. And now the blue shaded areas are times when both indicators are above zero. And I actually checked today, and uh, the current reading for the advanced decline percent 50 day average is uh, 9.43. And the uh, up down volume indicators is still over one, 1.05. So even though the market has pulled back, these indicators are in, uh, updated in a day. So these are current readings. Well, this re I text you, uh, yes, where I sent you these charts about four or five hours ago, right? But I just checked them here a few minutes ago and they're still above uh, zero. And as long as they hold above zero, the trend in general should continue. You can have some uh, corrections, but. In general, it identifies the trend. So, in my view, even though we pulled back here, if you do your Fibonacci relationship, your confluence thing, yes. Uh, if you take the bottom of the October and the bottom of March, uh, the March one comes in fifty percent retracement. The October one comes in at uh, right around that thirty-one area, and a thirty-eight point two percent retracement comes in around thirty-one area. So you have a kind of confluence of around that thirty-one area which pretty much we hit today. So I'm thinking this is not a start of a decline, but since both indicators are above zero, it uh, looks like to me anyhow, this, this rally is, is, uh, uh, should continue. I think, I don't think there's a, um, a top of any consequence here. So right you know, now I want to go back to how we started off, meaning how we used to start it off because you and I are used to this, and this is this can get confusing sometimes to the audience. And specifically, what I mean, folks, is this. And you've seen me do this a dozen times, man, saying, "Okay, the market's going higher, but we get an ABC down." Okay, um, but that's what happens. That that's the reality. Okay, so it's so cool that you yeah. did that, Tim. No, seriously. I mean, because the bottom line is that I I actually you know I'm with you a thousand percent here, man, um, and. That's what's so tricky about the gold market, right? I mean, the gold market loves trading like this, man. You know, it really does. Yeah. 
You know? Yeah, it did. and actually, uh, you know, I wish I had more. Actually, there, there's one more indicator before we get away from this. Okay. Is on page four, that fourth page. Okay, I have it. That chart four. Yep. And it, it's, there's a lot of different types of feminine indicators. And I haven't found a really an ideal one yet. But this is a, this is a sprout, which is basically you, you can buy it and it actually buys you physical gold. The sprout fund, and, yep. Yeah, it's a sprout fund and, and it's a physical gold fund. So, anyhow, you can buy it right now for a discount of 1.16%. This is actually yesterday's close. Okay. And when it gets up around 0%, in other words, it's, it's at par, is when times you can have a, sometimes short term tops, sometimes intermediate term tops. But at least a short term top, and we're, we're not even to zero yet. We're still at one point one six percent. So I'm thinking we don't have enough confidence, or I guess we don't have enough. Well, there's still fear in the market because this thing's still selling at a discount. If it gets down to around three percent kit at discount, um, which is uh, has been you know major lows in the past. That's where the I the, see. Uh, the, yep. Yeah. The March the March of 2020 low came went down. Uh, a three percent discount, and the one we had here just recently that was what well, looks like about December of um, of last year. It got down below three percent, but you get up to zero percent, which is all those little blue lines across there in that shaded light area. Okay, that's where we can have um, you can have uh, short term pullbacks. We're not there yet, so I'm thinking we'll get there maybe in August of this year. Yeah, but uh, I, that kind of reinforces my idea that we're probably, as far as the gold market is concerned, uh, even though there's a little bit of fear out there, this is just a, a kind of a shakeout. Uh, right. Get the weak hands out before the next rally uh, uh, comes. I may change my mind, but according to the indicators today, there's more room to the upside on GDX than actually gold. So. Yeah. No, no. Listen, I understand, man. <laughs> you know, it's wild, Tim, because we've been doing this so long. And even when we were trading together in the 90s, it, it's yeah. it, it's intriguing and kind of the way that we look at the market that you can actually what happens, folks, is that you have to be able to flip like this. OK, that's the bottom line. It's not flipping on the longer term. It's that it had the extension coming out. And the bottom line is that you're going to get up and it seems you have to pull back and, you know, as Tim is, you know, explaining to you how these are set up, um, you know, in the longer p picture, it doesn't mean a lot. In the shorter picture, it does, though, because what does happen is that the gold equities themselves move so fast. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what's, you know, always intriguing about um, the gold market in general. You know what I'm saying? You know, so um, pretty yeah. clear that that dollar move, Tim, the dollar's moving like crazy, man. I mean, that's what's hitting this thing. There's no doubt. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I really don't follow the dollar that much, but I'm a little kind of surprised that we're down. Uh, as we, I thought we might hold at the previous highs, but the market's always seems like the trend line stuff and the um, normal technical analysis for gold doesn't work as well. Yeah, you have to kind of find new indicators. To, stay, to, stay right there, Tim. We have a quick, quick break. We're going to bring you right back. Welcome back, folks. It's our Dow Industrials are up two. You get the Nasdaq up one fifty. S and P's are up twenty five. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and you can reach Tim, folks, at ord oraclecom twenty four hours a day. So, Tim, do you want to stay on this chart? Are we going to go to another chart? What would you like to do? Uh, we go to chart three. Actually, I sent you over another chart. Um, I do a lot of stuff with uh, ratios and stuff, and yep. And uh, did you? You happen to get? I sent it to you in an email. Just a picture of it. I got four charts, right? Yeah, you got one more. I got one more. Okay, cool. One second. Hold it. Now, go ahead. You can start talking. I'll, I can get it over there. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, I, I just uh, anyhow the first chart number three, uh, the middle window is the um, SPX, but the the bottom window is a five-day average of the uh, SPX VIX ratio. And this kind of looks like the big picture. We showed this picture last week. Yep. And I was predicting, uh, well, anyhow, in a nutshell, uh, the bottom window, which is the five-week SPX VIX ratio, when that diverges from the S&Ps, you either get a top or you get a bottom. And it works really well at tops. And I pointed out the bigger time frames. Uh, we had the top here back in... January 2022, 
than that top back in in what probably February of two thousand or uh, twenty out of that previous top. Okay, it lighted in in green there, light green. So now he, the market on the uh, SPX is actually going sideways here since uh, February of this year. I mean, it went down a little bit, came back. And we're approximately right around the February highs. We're kind of almost like breaking out right now. But anyhow, if you notice the bottom chart there, the five-week SPX VIX ratio has made higher highs, not lower highs, but higher highs. The SPX VIX ratio leads the way for the S&PX. So that's predicting that the market is not making a top here, but is building the sideways trading range that was going on since last May uh, is going to break out to the upside according to this ratio breaking out above the previous highs. If you as the that NASDAQ ratio, already did, right? You're, you're high. Pardon? I said as the NASDAQ has already broken out, you know? Yeah, NASDAQ's breaking out. It's leading way. But if you look at this ratio, though, it's higher now than it was back in May of last year. It's the highest high it's been over the last you know year. Um, you can't. So, so anyhow, it leads the way. So we're breaking out to the upside. And if you do the, the analysis here, take the width of the SPX and you add it on over the trading range of the last, well, last year, last 12 months, anyhow, and you add that on, you come back up to probably the um, January 2020 high. I think ultimately we're probably going to hit up there. Whether that's going to be a top or not, don't know. But uh, we're probably at least going to test it. Then from there, we'll have to determine. It. But uh, the market, in my opinion, is, is in uh, is in a, a healthy position. I've I've seen uh, uh, selling climaxes in the uh, McCall and Oscar, and along with the summation index, and both of them got in, into uh, what they call initiation of the rally type readings. Yeah. Uh, so this sideways pattern is building cause uh, to move up, not uh, to, uh, to move. You know, back down. This is a halfway point of down. Move up. No, it's a bottoming process that may go back up and test the January 2022 highs. So, right. time will tell. Can can we go oh. through the um, the chart you gave me with the Bollinger Band pinch? Bo uh, oh, uh, this current one. Yes. All right. Yeah, I, I wanted to point that out. It, it's I do a lot of stuff with Bollinger. They're really helpful too. And right and. Uh, actually, if you want to make life easy for you, look at the weekly chart. And as long as the stock's above the mid Bollinger Band, the stock's in an uptrend. And that goes along with indexes, too. If if you look at this chart, just going back as far as I, you could go here, if you're along above the mid Bollinger Band, you know, you stayed long for weeks, if not months. And if you look at the, you know, the March of 2020 low, or two, you know, 2020 low, you got in kind of late, but if you got in there, um, you know, you, you would have been long for almost a year all the way up into, um, um, well, it'd be January 2020 high, then finally fell below the mid Bollinger Band. Yes. And in general, we've been above the mid Bollinger Band since, um, it looks like about, what, uh, February, not February, probably January there or something. And we're still above the mid Bollinger Band. So, and now your your Bollinger bands are starting to pinch here. When you get a pinching Bollinger band, that means volatility is going to increase. That's what happens in trading ranges. Bollinger bands start to squeeze. Yeah. And that trading range is, is going to break out. It doesn't tell you what direction, uh, but it tells you instead of moving sideways, you're going to start an impulse wave. So okay. the Bollinger band pinch here suggesting we're pretty close to an impulse wave starting. Yeah. And in my opinion, since... You know, the five-week SPX VX ratio is making a bullish divergence here. The breakout, in my opinion, will be to the upside. And you could probably see energy coming to the market maybe starting this month, uh, still maybe June, and uh, possibly, you know, rally uh, through the summer. That's how, yes. uh, because of the Bollinger Band pinch, and, and it looks bullish. Uh, so... You know, I, I remember, Tim, that when we actually used to have, uh, you know, John Bollinger on quite a bit, and, uh, you know, what happens, folks, is that this is now I'm going back to the 90s, but it's crazy because that's when I remember specifically Yahoo was riding this band and he was speaking about the aspect that 
it can ride that band for so long it's amazing right so yeah, yeah. this is always intriguing yeah. watching how these uh bands shake out man but I, I like i like how it's set up there's no doubt yeah this this is this may stay above the you know we've been above the bollinger band for you know quite a few uh, weeks now yeah and so we we may start to trend but it's a good intermittent term indicator you know you don't have to uh i mean you get whipped around a little bit but Right. In trends, it stays above the mid Bollinger band and it stays there for months and months. So it's a heck of a good trend. So, um, but yeah, there's a lot of bullishness in, in the market. And, you know, you look at, uh, I do some stuff with cinema too. I do that individual investor thing. And, okay. And, uh, they're pretty, I didn't have that chart shown because I didn't think we'd have time to get to it. Yeah. But, uh, they're pretty much uh, in the doldrums and, and, you know, you have your clients probably talking to you about, there's no way this market's going to be bullish with, you know, whatever reason. Yep. And it, it defines the odds, you know. It's, uh, it does define all, the odds, Everybody yes. on one side of the fence, you want to be on the other side of the fence. So. Right. So, yeah. You got to love so, it, right? So, yeah. let me ask you this. What, you know, just in general, we only got like a minute left. But in general, like, what have you thought about the market like the last five or ten years in general? Um, I don't know. There's statistics out there to give you a statistic. Seventy-four percent of the time, going back to 1950, the market's been up. Yeah, exactly. Adding dividends is 81 percent. Okay. So you really don't want to bet against the market. But if you get you know big declines, they come every once in a while. We had one obviously starting to January 2020. Yes. But you know they're really defining those bottoms. What, what I've learned over the years is. You got to go where the panic is. If you don't get panic, you don't have a bottom. So I learned over the years, that right? As long as you, you get plenty of panic, you know, you want to buy those bottoms and ride the trend up. Because in general, 75% of the time, the market's up every year. Ride so. it on up, baby. Tim Ward. <laughs> Listen, man, you have a great one. Safe one. We'll talk to you next week, Tim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. <laughs>